Hi everyone, this video is for those who interact with BDC engineers and is intended to show you the most effective way to communicate to them in order to enhance the quality and efficiency of the outputs they provide to you. So here's six tips for getting the best from your BDC team. Number one, give clear instructions. Clear instructions when communicating is essential. The instructions should be specific, concise, and easy to understand. Use simple language and provide examples to clarify the instructions if possible. Using visual aids such as sketches or diagrams to supplement the instructions is one of the best ways to communicate what information should be contained in the deliverable. Relying on verbal communication alone is more likely to result in miscommunication or the need for follow-up questions. Number two, define expectations. It's important to define expectations when working with VDC engineers. This includes defining project goals, timelines, and deliverable requirements. You should be specific about what you expect and ensure that the engineer understands what is required of them. When giving a deadline, leave time for any necessary corrections as deliverables almost always need some adjustments, but be transparent about your final deadline as a VDC engineer has many tasks to prioritize and is committed to achieving each one on time. If there are changes to the project scope or timeline, they should be communicated as soon as possible. Number three, understand the limitations of VDC. While VDC is a powerful tool, it does have its limitations. Virtual models can only be as accurate as the information that is available, and there may be unforeseen challenges that arise during the construction process. For example, the virtual model might not account for unforeseen site conditions such as rocky terrain or the presence of underground utilities. Another thing to keep in mind is that VDC work often requires the use of several software programs to produce a deliverable. There's often a sequence with each step built on top of the previous. This means that while a change may seem simple, it can have cascading effects that require the engineer to rework each other step further down the chain. This is another reason that communicating your needs clearly the first time is essential to reducing the turnaround for your deliverables. Number four, use collaborative tools. Collaborative tools such as cloud-based platforms or project management software allow for efficient file sharing and communication. They also provide a centralized location for project documents and allow for version control, ensuring that everyone is working from the same set of information. Microsoft Teams and Zoom are simple and effective options for distance communication as it allows you to share information and show visual aids easily. Be sure to forward any documents you mark up during the meeting to the engineer for the reference. 5. Schedule regular check-ins. Regular check-ins are necessary to ensure that the project is progressing according to plan. These check-ins can take the form of virtual meetings, email updates, or phone calls. By scheduling regular check-ins, you can make sure that the project stays on track and that any issues are addressed quickly. Number 6. Listen. A good VDC engineer will be forthcoming with the challenges your request may present. They may require additional information, time, files, or software access. They may also ask you to provide information in a specific format, such as an Excel file, email, or software file, or to provide calculated numbers. Listening and responding to the needs of the VDC engineer will equip them with what they need to achieve your desired results. By following these six simple guidelines, you can increase the quality and turnaround of your VDC deliverables. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to learn more about VDC and BIM, then click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thanks for watching.